Okay. Thomas, hello. Hi, Alex. Um, how are you? Amazing. How are you? Good. Loving life. I've got my promotional We Make Websites t-shirt on, actually, which is a co coincidence. Honest. Um, <laughs> so uh, to introduce ourselves, I'm Alex. I'm a founder at We Make Websites. Uh, Thomas? I'm Thomas. I'm uh, leading the the e-commerce department at uh, Paul Valentine. Great. And uh, We Make Websites is a Shopify design development uh, optimization agency. And we've been working with Thomas and his team at Paul Valentine to uh, build them a headless uh, platform on Shopify, on Netlify. And uh, we're going through that project at the moment. So we thought we would share uh, that journey uh, today. So I guess, Thomas, what was it that uh, triggered the decision to, to go with headless? Uh, yes. Um, the thing is that uh, as we scaled extremely fast with Paul Valentine in the past years, um, we realized that we had to think about uh, how we could penetrate the global market much better than we were doing in the past. And uh, in the beginning, I mean, we, we had many Shopify shops, uh, some of which even had some multiple countries in it, like having a Euro store with all Euro countries in it. Yeah. And um, these countries were not even properly localized in terms of language and currency. Um, I mean, we had automatic translation, um, nor was it possible to fill in some country specific content. And uh, yet it's quite important. So. Yeah, the logical conclusion was um, that we need a dedicated Shopify store for each major market we want to focus on. And then uh, again, we quickly realized that uh, it was not the best solution as it would have, it would have required uh, a lot of operational effort from our side. Yep. And anyone who, who wants to manage multiple stores simultaneously, I mean, whether it's a a new product launch or a sale or something like that, everyone will know that pain. So uh, we took a closer look at that topic, uh, headless commerce. And um, yeah, therefore we talked to our success manager in Shopify and uh, they all praised, we make websites as the experts for headless commerce. And therefore we went in contact with you guys. And in the discovery phase, we even realized that there are much more advantages than uh, only the operational effort, which could be saved. A lot of more things that are really a game changer in the, in the e-com game. So yeah, for example, yeah, yeah I, I have a lot of examples, but- Oh yeah, uh, let's hear some examples. Um, for example, um, one of the things that impressed me the most um, when I saw it first time was the insane loading speed of these pages. Um, I mean, it's like if you already have a sports car and you think, oh, that's quite fast, and then you switch to a Formula One car and you're absolutely blown away and you're like, wow, that's incredible somehow. Yeah. And then we know, I mean, everyone who's um, thinking and working with statistics and um, all these KPIs on the website, they know that it's very important in, in, in all granular parts to have it in, in, in loading speed, a very fast loading speed uh, of their website, of course, um, and how much impact it has to the revenue uh, immediately. Yep. So, yeah, that was an absolutely uh, amazing aspect. And... Um, Another um, an, another thing that was uh, quite important um, for us uh, was the flexibility to um, connect the, the the Shopify checkout, which we basically use right now, to different point of sales. For example, we had uh, a pop up store a few months ago, and um, we couldn't include it in our uh, existing environment. Um, it has. It had to be a, a unique, a own dedicated environment um, because we, we haven't back had less commerce in the past. Um, so that could also be done in the future mm. in one environment. In, in one environment, uh, which is also amazing, really. Uh, or another B two B store, for example. Also, yeah. Uh, yeah. something we took into consideration uh, could be interesting, and that would also absolutely fit perfectly into the headless commerce structure. Yeah. Yeah, those, yeah. those are some um, 
good circumstances in it. I think that so the first one, the uh, overall international architecture, is something that we spent a lot of time getting right. And um, yeah, as you were saying, Thomas, you had kind of like twelve at least Shopify stores for every combination of currency and region. And now now we've got that down to two. It could be one, in fact, but I think you wanted to take US dollars directly through one store. So we have just uh, two stores for two currencies that have very minimal management overhead uh, in each. And then we have however many Netlify instances are required for every combination of um, uh, currency and language. And that includes countries that have got you know two languages, so like Belgium or Switzerland with three languages that we can very easily go in and configure and say, okay, Belgium, uh, French, Dutch, it's two regions, and then we just do a JSON configuration file to say, right, we, we now have you know 25 regions or 30 or 50 or whatever, and here is the logic. So if someone lands on, I'm in the US, so if I land on the, the European store, it will say, hey, do you want to go to the US store? We route, them, we route them to the correct one. And the thing that surprised me now we have it working is we can so quickly add new stores that when we realize we missed one, we can just go and, no development required. We can go in and add a new instance, add the configuration, um, and it works. And we've used Reach for the, the uh, currency side of that, which has helped with um, adding languages quickly. Um, absolutely, absolutely. And it's so important to synchronize, for example, with our performance marketing team and to know which markets are we pushing the next. And, for example, we'd like to take steps into... East Europe, and then um, I just contact you guys. Okay, we need to localize Poland or something like that. And then uh, the new locale would be, um, um, yeah, would be created very fast. And that's really a huge, a huge benefit. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. So the thing that I think we we struggled with a lot though is trying to figure out. Okay, well, uh, we have you know twelve or fifteen languages in Contentful, and then in Reach we have you know, 10 currencies. And we have to now create a feed or, uh, because we've got to remember we've got to feed out to Facebook for remarketing. And I think that was probably a step for all of us that in the old world of Shopify, you just plug it in and it just, it just works. Well, you know, near enough. But now we have to say, okay, we need another microservice to run to collect this information from these different areas, which I think actually has uh, a lot of benefits, but it's a new step, I think, for, for us in the process so there's more more development sometimes, but once you've done the the foundation, I suppose it's very easy just to keep adding and adding and adding. Which um, for the business then, so so how do they so they decide? Okay, we have a new strategic you know region, or we have lots of buyers in Japan or Australia. So now we want to localize further into those regions. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, as you already mentioned. Um, of course, the base is um, it's not that easy. And of course, it has a lot of development um, to do. Um, most of the time, it has to be done aside from your daily business. So um, it, it is effort for the team. But in the end, um, it, it's a huge... I mean, um, I was speaking to, to, one of the, uh, to one of my team members today. And when they saw um, how to manage all that content so easily above all these countries, um, they were smiling and they were like, "Oh, it's a it's a life changer, really. We don't have to <laughs> to to um, to um, adjust all collections, or we don't have to adjust all all products in every store, or the translations. It can all be done into one place, which is so incredible and amaz amazing. But you don't have to if you want to have different content on different locales. It's also very easy. Just duplicate mm -hmm. and implement all the new content to the." Um, new sections and it's really it's really changing the complete world for us yeah that brings me to another topic uh for something that i think we had to spend a lot of time thinking about which was the content model to enable that and um it's one of these things where it's a you know great flexibility or great uh power becomes great responsibility and how how do you decide the correct you know, uh, local structure and which content types can be localized and how do we make that possible? And I think that, uh, during the project, we, you know, we have this content model of, you know, a page and a product and a collection and all this. And um, I think we continue to continually intellectualize, okay, you know, maybe it's a slightly cleverer version of doing this. And uh, when we talked to Contentful, actually, this week, they were saying um, some of it depends on your uh, permissions. So 
if you have a, a translation agency that has access to only the French version, then maybe you can enable that with a certain configuration, or you make it easier for one content editor who does all languages. And I think there's lots of examples like that where we, we have to continue to listen to, okay, the person who is uh, administrating or looking after the site, what do, what do they want? Because we have so many possibilities that we have to make sure we get the one that actually uh, works. Um, which again is new because on Shopify, the admin is the admin and you know we can do some things sometimes, but it's very rigid, uh, the admin, which has got a lot of benefits too, like it's faster to develop on and so on. But here we can really think, okay, what does the editor want uh, to do? Absolutely, absolutely. And we even think about giving uh, the translation agency uh, access to Contentful so they can uh, immediately implement all these translations. So it's even less work for us. Um, yeah, but I wondered it, if you might do that. Yeah. Because but it's really... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But I, I just want to, uh, to, to, uh, to express the importance of having... Um, real human translated content. Um, we had a really, a really a comparable um, uh, a sheet where we saw how the pages were performing with automatic translation and how the pages were uh, performing now after we had human translations. And it's huge, really, it's yeah. absolutely huge. And uh, that's a no-brainer. So it's also a big learning for us um, to really take that effort, but it, it's absolutely worth it. Uh, in the end to have a uh, human translation in the end yeah 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 we always say that because especially for a brand like you where th there's a lot of um uh feeling behind, behind the brand it's not just the words you know it's the tone of voice that you need to also have correct in the other language and um you ultimately need a native speaker to to take it and and localize the content absolutely um yeah, so, so you mentioned speed. So yeah, I think that's a huge step forward. And I think for us as a development agency, sometimes we have to keep in mind things that are different. Like to get that speed, to get the Formula One car, we have to uh, create static content on Netlify. So you, you know, in, in Shopify, we have like a, a PDP and it loads and we can do all these different things at, um, at that moment. Whereas uh, with the, the uh, approach with Headless, we're building these pages that are sat on Netlify and we can still do dynamic things on the pages, but it's a slightly different mindset for the developer. Um, now, they all our developers understand all that, but now, you know, I'm getting a bit further in my career. To me, it's a new world and I keep thinking, wow, you know, you have to that, create the page at the, during the build and have it there, but that's how we can get these epic, you know, speeds. Um, so that's I, same for me. I'm amazed by it. In fact, we had to add this little bit of like a logo because it was too fast. Because you can't tell the, <laughs> the page has changed. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> so the wheels were spinning, but the car was moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what was the third thing on your list? So we talked about speed, talked about uh, uh, localization. Um, the flexibility of um, adding new point of sales um, to ah, yes, the right. Shopify checkout. Amazing. Yeah, so I think that will come, uh, become very powerful as we go forward because now you have this hub in Contentful with the Shopify combined. And then now we have all these websites, you know, 20, 30 different websites, um, which are very easy to manage. But yeah, you could have the app connected to the same thing. You could have voice. You could have marketplaces. You could have B2B. Um, yeah, that, that again is a huge thing where we have to start thinking, what do we want to do? Because there's so many possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I, I still remember the time last year when, when I was thinking about the technical concept of having a, a, a known environment for the pop-up store and it almost, almost cracked my mind, my, my brain. Um, now it's so easy just, uh, <laughs> connecting it with the new headless uh, commerce. Uh, architecture and yeah that's it so it's really 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 amazing yeah yeah so what 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 let's wrap up with like a few uh lessons <laughs> so what could we say to anybody starting this journey today um whew, there are a lot of lessons um, it's a new world very new world it's an absolutely new world and it's absolutely okay to iterate to the solution somehow i mean it's very difficult to have everything in mind when you start the project. 
Um, it absolutely makes sense to contact someone who is an expert and not doing it on your own, just trying to figure out everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it absolutely means, for example, it will be, it will be effort. It's, it's not deniable. There will be a lot of effort to do. Um, and it will most of the time happen aside of the daily business. And, um, but it's worth it. Absolutely worth it. Yeah. So I think the, the planning the there was quite a big thing that, continually you're having to do more like uh, diagrams and more like, okay, this is how it, it could work and is this the right way and what's your feedback? And that, I think for us, we, you know, we always have that with design, of course, like, okay, here's all the pages, what do you think? And, you know, we expect that to take weeks, but now we have it with the uh, architecture too. Like, okay, you know, which systems, okay, we have Algolia for search. Well, okay, what, which filters do we need? So then we have to talk to you, we have to talk to the designer, we have to talk to the developer, we have, and, and combine it all together. So you have this um, a collaboration, which is bigger, that which it just takes longer, I think, to, during the, the, the initial build. Absolutely. And um, uh, it's also very important to do a little bit of research in the beginning for all these microservices. For example, Algolia as a search. I mean, there are some other search providers um, but we, for example, realized that Algolia is definitely one of the best that fits to us, but there are also a lot of other um, microservices and um, it makes sense to either do your own research if it fits to your, um, to your own business concept or to contact you guys uh, who can give some hints, for example, one, two examples which, um, which are best for that. Um, yeah, but, but still that's something that has to be done in the beginning, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a much more auditing of all the different uh, services that are um, available. Um, Absolutely, auditing exactly uh, very important. Have have a big audits with all departments in the company, knowing who who's connected to who and how are they um, related to each other somehow. For example, the performance marketing team has some marketing pixels in the in the pages or the customer care team has some uh, customer review tools inside or has some um, 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 FAQ pages which are managed by them, some dedicated ones, yeah. or um, the accounting team has, is using some tools. So it's really important to have all the departments into that project because it's really concerning almost everyone. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And so it's true on all e-commerce projects and by now I've done you know, hundreds and hundreds of projects. and. You always have the situation that you know the e-commerce team begin and they're the ones that are pushing it forward, and then you get halfway through or towards the end of a project, and they say, "Oh, yeah, there's this guy in the finance team, and he really, really, really needs this report or something." Now, in the in Shopify, you know, okay, it's a it's a pro and a con. So the pro is if there's an app, you connect it and it it does the thing. So let's say connect to zero for accounting. Okay, connection done. Uh, the con is, you know, if they want something that is a bit unusual, then you have to develop it and whatever. So we have the same thing with uh, headless builds. But I think the difference is we make a lot of architecture choices, like you said, you know, like the services that we use and the way that we, you know, where do we store prices or where do we store the multilingual uh, content, which then are harder to change later on. So I think earlier on, this is a lesson for us, you have to keep digging all the time, like, hey, let's go talk to the guy in the back room in the accounts just to make sure that he has what he needs and everything, which is, all, is always the same in any project. But I just feel like with the headless ones, we're, we're building the thing from scratch. So we, we have more possibility, but with that, we have more preparation to make. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Very good. Okay, well, uh, Thomas, that was very useful. Thank you. And as, a, as well, always, it was a pleasure. As always, a pleasure to me. And um, yeah, to everyone who's considering having headless commerce, really, it's absolutely worth it. It's, it's amazing. Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you, Alex. Speak soon. Speak soon. All right. Very good. <laughs> <laughs>